We're yeah. here. Yeah. Mickey, the song's over. You don't have to keep That's it. In. No. <laughs> There's a delay even on the live broadcast. Yeah, I was gonna say, that little five seconds, we just got to keep going, right? Exactly. exactly. Keep it going. Hello um, and welcome to episode 29 of Carvers and Creators, a weekly demonstration and discussion with pumpkin carvers, sculptors, and multi-talented artists. We humbly ask that you please consider giving us a like and a follow on the platform you're watching us on. And please let us know in the comments where you're watching from and if you have any questions for the Carvers and our special guest. My name is Michael Mondragon. You might hear me called Mickey uh, quite a few times here tonight. And Hi, I'll Mickey. be running the show, moderating comments, and chiming in from time to time. Let's meet the Carvers. First, he is an artist and sculptor from Boston, Massachusetts. He is the 2019 champion of Food Network's Outrageous Pumpkin, Paul Dever. Welcome. Hey, guys. Welcome, Paul. Hey, happy hey. Thursday. <laughs> Next, he is a multimedia sculpture artist from Tucson, Arizona, and a finalist on Halloween Wars 2019 on the Food Network, Matt Harper. Hey. Good morning, kid. Hey, Maddie. Our guest today is a sculptor, builder, and painter from Southern California. Please welcome the multi-talented Mike Regan. Welcome. Hey. Now, do you go welcome. by uh, Mike, Mike FX, Rod uh, Resin? Mike's fine. Mike's fine. Yeah. Right on. Very so cool. let's go. Uh, Matt, this is your carving from last week. This is uh, amazing. And and a female, no less. Uh, more, it looks, looks, like, looks like a dude in drag a little bit. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, Mike, I, I always struggle to do female faces. I don't know what in the hell it is. Uh, so out of pumpkin or any medium, I just it just my brain doesn't work. Although I'm a huge fan of females, always have been. But yeah, last week um, we did a uh, we did a, a classic monster that was drowsy, drowsy, and uh, and the and the and the form of a big butternut squash fit you know the Bride of Frankenstein. So that's kind of where the idea came from. And um, uh, we actually had some some folks give us that that tip uh, last week. So anyway, that that was my girl, and, and I'm glad that that's behind us. You did a great job on it, man. It looks great. I love the list. I think so too. And and you, and uh, the side of it, you, you put a lot of great uh, that that squiggle of the line in the hair as well. That yeah, that's called really potato. I, the, the the hair is potato, and I, I gave her little Frankenstein earrings, little Fs on her on her earrings there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that's awesome. <laughs> Devils in the details. And Paul, I mean, you guys, you guys kill it every week. This is these are so good. Oh, thank you. It um. It had a, a facelift after the show ended last week. I wasn't happy with where it was going. So I kind of, luckily that squ those squashes, which I've forgotten the name of again, but gave to Matt. So hopefully he wrote it down. <laughs> I'll, I'll look it up. <laughs> they, uh, they're really thick and uh, it stays moist. So I was able to uh, pick up pick up the pieces and kind of re-sculpt a couple of areas I wasn't happy with. But yeah, he's, he's a drowsy vampire, I'd say. He is. <laughs> You can't stay much, to go too much O negative. Exactly. It gets yeah. everybody sick, drowsy. <laughs> well, Mike, I'd like to introduce you to the fourth member of Carvers and Creators. It is the wheel. So we will be spinning the wheel. I'm not sure if you're yeah, participating this week. Are you gonna are you gonna take the challenge? I I I have a couple of things standing by here that I could work on if I don't participate, but if it piques my interest, I may jump in. Yeah. All right. Come on, Wheel. Do your thing. All right. All right. All right. We'll let Paul yeah, explain it. We miss monsters again, right? Yeah, we don't yeah. want to. Oh, boy. Yeah. If we get that oh. again, I don't know. I think uh, the, the world's telling us something. Well, yeah, it's telling me my wheel's broken. I got to get a, I got to figure out how to spin it different. Okay, so hi, everybody. So this is the wheel for anybody that hasn't seen the wheel before. So what we're going to do is we're going to spin it two times. First time we spin it is going to be the character that we have to carve for the evening and the outside has all of the emotions that this character will hopefully have by the end of it all. So rather than explain, I think it's time to spin. So it gives us a little more time. Is everybody ready? Let's yeah. do it. That's a spin. You gotta be kidding me. Okay. <laughs> really? oh. Okay, that I thing is broken. Play, I gotta play Mega Millions or something. All right, respin or are we doing this? I, I say respin. Respin. 
Respin? Yeah. All right, Mike. Okay. Our guest says respin. That's what we got to do. All right, so <laughs> it should be different because I'm spinning from a different point. I hope so. Yeah. Imagine if it does it again. All right. Pirate. That's a good Okay. One. All right. I like that one. That, 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 that could be very doable. It's a little different. Yeah, there's some options there. Let's see what his emotion is. A hysterical pirate. <laughs> I like it. A hysterical yeah. pirate. So that, there's some options there. Hysterics, yeah, that could be anything. Wow. All right. Yeah, I like that. Hysterical, that's, that's a little different. Hysterical pirate. Pirate. Think you're in your interest at all? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's scaring me. I don't know about anybody else. Yeah, I like it. I think it. I think hysterical is like there's some, some energy there. You know. Yeah. I think uh, Pirates of the Caribbean. Um, yeah. Any yeah, of the. Uh, it's as long as it's in hysterics, you just put an eye patch and a bandana on it, and it's a pirate, right? <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Hey man, some pirates had razors. Some pirates could shave. Some pirates didn't get their eyes taken out. There's there's options here. I'm gonna have a hypothetical peg leg too on my uh, squash. <laughs> wow! Also, you're gonna finally use the butt turn nut squash that you have. Oh my yeah, this is <laughs> butt turn nut squash. <laughs> so actually, it's called a butt or nut squash because I can't. Ah! Have a butt. <laughs> yeah, that's a new a new. Uh, Term for for a very alternate universe uh, protocile for sure. <laughs> <laughs> right. So you know, me, I need that. Where's that aisle? Could you point me to that aisle? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so if you're carving with us, so we're going to give you five minutes to grab your tools, a pumpkin squash, something to carve with or on. Um, so do that, and uh, we we will uh, start out. We usually start out uh, every show with a toast. Uh, we'll let our our guests. What what are you drinking tonight? Uh, unfortunately, it is middle of the afternoon. I've got the rest of the day ahead of me, so I'm I'm with the water. Okay, fair that's enough. What, that's something that's drinking vodka would say. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll uh, we'll go around the time zones. Uh, Matt, what do you have? So I, I went. I'm kind of a um, dual minded today. So I I grabbed these. Um, uh, what is this? Um, um, I guess it's a, a malt beverage. Uh, <laughs> What do you call those things? Uh, seltzer, like a like oh, a anyway, like a hard so seltzer. Yeah, hard seltzer, and it's grapefruit flavored. So I mean, that 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 speaks to the feminine side of me. So I'm putting that right here. And then I've got yeah. on the on the masculine side when I do want to step up, I've got um, this single oh, barrel. There you go. Um, and I already got it poured just in case. Oh, I thought you were oh. going to put a straw in it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, I got choices tonight. I can, I can, depending on I get, if, I, if my pirate's a female or not. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Right on, Paul. What do you got? Well, I'm cleaning out the uh, the old beer fridge for the the next trip. Like we were talking about earlier, it's time to re up on the craft beer. So I'm gonna go with a Sam Adams Holiday White Ale. I know the Ooh. holidays are over, but That's it's okay. Good. There Ooh, we go. That looks nice. That looks nice. nice. It's a good one. Michael? I'm not sure if I've had this one uh, before on the show or not. I might have had it on my baseball show, uh, but this is a uh, Stone uh, Tangerine Express IPA. Why is it upside down? Because you leave no stone unturned. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Ah, marketing. <laughs> Son of a gun. When it's empty, you can read it. Ah! Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> So no, no one's All breaking right. the rum with the pirate theme or anything. Yeah, I, it's this is the hardest part of the show. Every time for me, it's like, okay, what the hell? <laughs> Figuring out where to start, but yeah. that's it. I like the journey. So uh, being stuck sometimes and and being a little nervous about it is kind of my favorite part. <laughs> so hey. hey, before we start, I want to thank Christina Patnod for the beautiful earrings she sent my wife today. Appreciate Just it. There. Lenore appreciates it. So that's thank awesome. you. Thank you very much. I saw I saw Dan, our our, our guest from last week, just, oh, just yeah. on too. Danny, what's up? Good to see. Yeah, a lot of uh regulars in uh the comments. Um thank you for joining us tonight. Um yeah, this is uh it's a whole different direction. Yeah, this is this is cool. That's why that's why the wheel is so good. I mean, it really <laughs> challenges your your creativity as well. No yes. one knows where it's gonna send you. That's yeah. right. It's like a hella wheel too, you know, because it just it's, it's not it's not very friendly. 
All right. So, all right. Uh, so, Mike, what are you what are you gonna do? What what are you gonna uh, work yeah. on your? Yeah, I, I've I've got some clay on the side here warmed up, and I, I just have a tiny little armature here, so I'm gonna start something. Cool. Yeah. If a pirate, great. If I if it takes me somewhere else, I, I don't know. Isn't that the beauty of it? Right? Yeah. It's yeah. like uh, yeah. there are no rules right. in this uh, world. Yeah. Perfect. Loaded. Whatever. You should have a peg leg, though. I think. <laughs> I know that's the hard part of sculpting the entire body to get to the peg leg. That's really yeah. Hard. <laughs> Might well just kind of be a yeah phantom peg leg, you know. It's, it's implied. <laughs> it's implied. Yeah. So, Michael, I must yes. apologize. I was going through photos this morning to try and send you yeah. some film work stuff, and I rapidly realized how disorganized my photo filing <laughs> system is. And how in need of updating it needs to be done. So, um, unfortunately, I, I like had a folder uh, and it was just a mess. And I went, you know, if I send this to him, it's just going to be a mess. And it's, you know, you'll be pulling up photos that it's like, oh, what is this? And I'm like, uh, oh, it's craft service table on. <laughs> right. So and so goofing off, you know. So, Unfortunately, we're, we're, we'll just go with uh, stories and whatever you manage to dig up yourself. Perfect. Perfect. Well, um, yeah, I have plenty in the background. Cool. Um, so your work um, can be seen a lot of interesting places. And, and uh, when you look at your IMDb, um, yeah, it was tough to pick exactly what I should actually pick. Uh, yeah. because you are, oh my gosh, like it's, <laughs> it's really incredible. So, I mean, you've done, uh, everything from blade to men in black, um, uh, so cool. feast and, uh, you know, Batman and Robin, but you know, let's, let's, I mean, <laughs> that's just to name a few, I mean, Hellraiser, um, like how did, how and when did you start your kind of journey in this? Um, I started, I want to say it's like about 30 years ago. Um, the very first film I officially was hired to work on was uh, Elm Street Five. Oh, cool! Uh, and it was actually, it was actually the um, we were basically reshooting a bunch of stuff and giving it a new ending. Um, so I wasn't even on the initial shoot. I was kind of brought in to uh, help build a bunch of puppets and a bunch of weird stuff for the ending. Um, but yeah, it was about about twenty five years ago. And I've kind of worked at a handful of different shops. You kind of jump around. Um, the whole Hellraiser and uh, and Blade and all that stuff was. I managed to get hired by a guy from England who set up a shop out here, kind of Gary Tunnicliffe. And uh, things just worked out that I wound up working for him almost solidly, except for about a year or two in the middle for about 25 years. So wow. a lot of, lot of kind of low budgety horror, but um, just, it, it just allows you all the, the fun to do all the stuff, you know, I mean, big budget things like men in black, I'm, I'm just a cog in a wheel of, you know, like 50 people at a shop working on it. Um, Hellraiser, I kind of had a hand in just about everything on all of those. And oh, wow. My wow. fair share. I think we've done, I think I think I started on four, uh, and I've worked on all of them up through 10. Wow. wow. Ten. Folks, there's 10 Hellraisers out there. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> wow. See, it, happens, it happens all the time. I can't tell you. That there are shows that we're on that, you know, an actor goes, yeah, so do you guys think this is going theatrical? And, and you go, yeah, no, this is the sixth one. It's just going to go right to DVD. And they're like, there's six? <laughs> I thought this was like the first one. No, no, it's not. They they stop putting numbers on them. They put like, you know, Hellraiser right. World, Hellraiser Hellseeker. Yeah. And just yeah, so you don't right. have to know what the number is. Hellraiser Christmas, you know. <laughs> Hellraiser. <laughs> Hellraiser. <laughs> so wow. now I noticed that you you also worked on the Grinch too. So yeah. you, have you had a couple so you've worked with Rick Baker. I, I, it seems like a lot, huh? Yeah. That that was that was about the the two maybe two and a half years in the middle of my career at Gary's. That uh, I think I think he got stuck out in England working on Sleepy Hollow, and um, I basically you know, since he wasn't run up and running here, I kind of went off and managed to get on Rick's uh, 
starting off on the first Men in Black, and then it kind of rolled over into Grinch. I, I think it was like Grinch, Nutty Professor 2. Uh, God, I can't. Uh, Nutty Professor 2, maybe a, a film called Life with Eddie Murphy. Um, Batman and Robin. <laughs> wow. um, so, so there was like a period where it it just kind of rolled one into another, and I, it was great. I mean, Rick's is a great place to work, okay. uh, and one one of my childhood heroes. So it was great to to get to work there and to you know fulfill working there. And in, in so special, cool. special effects in Hollywood is it is it? I'm I'm not carving because I'm just I got to answer this question. Yeah. <laughs> is it is it like um for folks who like just want to make a break into it. And and you mentioned how you you kind of go jump from shop to shop. Is that pretty common in typical? Because you yeah. stayed most at, at one, but is it common to just go wherever the movie takes you, where almost like a production person? Yeah, yeah. Because um, usually, you know, unless unless you're a regular at a shop, like, I mean, when Gary had his shop out here, any, any project he'd get, I was the first person he'd call. He'd say, are you working somewhere? You know, are you busy? Can you... Do you think you can get off of that show and come here? Which oh, okay. I, I normally try and do just because uh, working for him was a blast. Yeah. But yeah, you tend to um, you tend to kind of go where the work is because you get hired yeah. on literally for one film, and if it doesn't if it doesn't roll into another, you're kind of like, you know, Friday's your last day. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Paychecks are nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, that's the. Uh, I mean. Uh, Mike and I both live in LA. So that's how, mm -hmm. when I, I moved out here in 97 and uh, that was exactly the way, you know, you just move out here, you just know a few people and then you go, what do you do? Oh, we're looking for someone like that. And then it's just like, that leads to another job, leads to another job. You meet another person and just keeps on kind of, kind of rolling. And uh, at that time, what in the, in the nineties, I mean, oh, I must've been going crazy back then, hmm. you know, um, you know, how, how was, was that the same for you? I um, mean, your experience or just, they just knew that you did this and it's like, just call yeah, you. Um, I, I was a really weird kid. I think I knew at about 10 years old that I wanted to do movies and monsters and stuff. And yeah, being a, being a kid of like eighties monster movies, you know, you see John Carpenter's the thing and go, I want to do that. I want to build those things. You know, yeah, how do yeah. I do that? Um, yeah. and I just, uh, like every waking minute was trying to figure out how to do stuff and sculpting masks and, you know, pouring latex in my bedroom and ruining the carpets and getting <laughs> yelled at by my parents for clogging up this thing with plaster. And, oh, um, yeah. They, they kind of, um, they're, they're both very academic. Um, and they, they kind of said to me, right, you know, you're kind of a mess at high school. Uh, <laughs> you're in high school and uh, you got to figure out what your life is, you know, and they kind of said, you're either going to the military or you're going to college. And I went, okay, well, I guess that, that isn't much choice. I guess I'm going to college. Yeah. Even though like everything I had looked at, like nobody working in effects went to college, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so I, I did, I tried the college thing for about, I think I lasted maybe a year, year and a half. And then, uh, one summer was calling, just decided I wasn't going to go home. I was going to call every effects shop in the Valley and, and call David Miller eventually. And he was like, oh, yeah, come on in. You know, we're looking for somebody. And drove down there and was like, yes, I'll start Monday, whatever you want. You know? Wow. Um, and basically, you know, parents were like, I'm very disappointed in you. you know, <laughs> um, but uh, and. Luckily enough, had a had a college counselor that said, "Right, um, why are you only taking two classes this next semester?" And I said, "Well, I'm working at an effects shop." And they were like, "Well, that's what you want to do, right? So go and do that. Do effects. Oh, wow. You're not doing effects. Come back to college." And Thirty years later, I I just haven't been back. You're gonna go? <laughs> so I'm not going to go. I can just keep doing it. Yeah. At this point, maybe you don't. Need that. Uh, wow, that's that's amazing. And so, so I mean, that's I really. I think at the time, I kind of lucked out. I mean, I think, I think the '90s was a very different atmosphere with it than it is now. Um, mm -hmm. Honestly, I don't know if I'd want to be in a, a, a kid trying to get into practical effects today, because it it really is like I mean, schedule time schedules are a lot shorter. That's a lot. It's a lot more pressure to get stuff done and get it done yeah. right. Budgets oh, yeah. are smaller, time schedules are shorter, and 
I think really a lot of shops, if they're hiring people, they want to know that the job's going to get done. It's going to get done right. It's going to get done yeah. in as little time as possible. Um, and the, the truth is computers are, you know, look, uh, every every day you can go, oh, yeah, that CGI sucked. Yeah. But that's the worst it's ever going to be. And the stuff that right. sucked, very obvious, the really good stuff, you never even question it, you know? That's right. Cool. Right. I was going to ask you about the CGI aspect of it. It was, I mean, the, that, yeah. and that's where those un, uh, those unrealistic timelines come from, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's cause, uh, yeah, they, I mean, you can tell now, like I, I, I was watching, I remember watching like something like the big bang theory, you know, it's just oh, like, yeah. and I go, that whole thing is on a green screen. They're, like they're not even in a, a studio yeah. now. Yeah. You know, yeah. even TV shows are even going to that. So, um, yeah. it's definitely changed landscape. No, I mean, I mean, especially TV stuff like doing set extensions and set, you know, building sets digitally and all that. It's it's crazy. You know? Yep. Yep. But that's most, never. You know, there's still some effect stuff out there. There's still people that like practical, and there's kind of a shift back to it. I mean, it's it feels like it's kind of balancing a little bit again. Yeah. You know, CG yeah. uh, augmenting practical effects and makeup. So. Yeah. Hopefully that lasts just long enough for me to get in and get out. <laughs> <laughs> the dream. There's so, nothing yeah. like a good makeup though on screen. Yeah. Like, yeah. Mesmerizing. Yeah. Well, like I, I think of like, CGI. I think of practical uh and again, help me with this because I in my brain it, it just is as magical as, as some of the other stuff. But when it comes to like the revenant and the scars and, and what you see in like um yeah. Uh, like 1917, like some, the, the battle wounds and the, the corpses everywhere and stuff like that. I mean, that's, yeah, you know, that's legit handmade, beautiful artwork, you know? And it's, yeah. yeah. I mean, um, it, well, let's put it this way. That, and usually like anything that they're in contact with is probably practical, but even on something like 1917, there's probably extensions and, and digital. Um, I mean, that whole film, because it's like that, you know, faked continuous shot. Yeah. There's yeah. all sorts of blending and stuff going on, you know? Yeah, uh, absolutely. So, I mean, yeah. there's, you can definitely say, oh, it's, it's great because of how much practical, but again, there's a lot of digital that you don't even, you don't even, you don't even notice. Yeah, about. you're right. Yeah, yeah, but the great movie, like a lot of the Star Wars movie and stuff, mm -hmm. they, they yeah, find yeah. the right balance between the two. No, like, absolutely. You can have one without the other and have it be a spectacular movie. In life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and I think, you know, in the case of the Star Wars films, they're definitely trying to uh, kind of have that feel of the old films. And the way to get that feel really is to embrace practical and to embrace yeah. real sets. And, yeah, I mean, but, puppetry. Yeah. But then you look at something like The Mandalorian, you go, right, you know, that's it's great. It's fun. And there's but in that there's there's definitely technology and computer at work with sets. You know, they, they film on a giant you know, it's like filming in front of a giant TV screen. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. And those, and there, a lot of those are digital sets and things. So, but then they have something like the amphibian lady that was the, with yeah. the egg. That's something yeah. like that. It's practical and that's amazing. Yeah. And, and, you know, for lack of a better one, a baby Yoda, you know, and thank goodness yeah. for that, let's puppet. continue to use the puppet. This yeah. Mike, Mike, uh, I mean, you live, um, you know, uh, you know, you know where the 405 and the 101 meet, right? Right in the yeah. valley right there. So there's this big reservoir right there. Uh -huh. And um, I used to work in, in that Sherman Oaks area. So one, uh, they shoot a lot of like uh, movie stuff there and a lot of, you sure. know, places where they need a big, you know, cement area to, to like, like are those car commercials and stuff where they're all spinning out and stuff like that. Um, yeah. But I remember one time driving past it and the whole reservoir was green as in green screen and uh oh, wow. it turned out they were they were filming transformers 2 there i believe all right and yeah. that that is where i was like holy cow they made a whole reservoir green screen which i'm just like i mean that if you could even um fathom the the or estimate the 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 mass of what that green screen studio would have been it's like it's insane to think that that it was all green screen yeah. so uh the way they were shooting stuff so like uh it, it's pretty amazing what they can do now but yeah it's like um 
those those old like Halloween movies, you know, like they didn't have any green screen in them. So it's like, yeah. uh, and they're legendary. So um, so it's it's a balance. Yeah, definitely, definitely. No, and so, I mean, yeah. I've, I've worked on some stuff where there's like lots of green screen, lots of stuff, and I I have to be honest. I mean, I just it being on a green screen like that, it just feels soulless. There's like just yeah. nothing there, nothing to react to. It's all. I don't know. I, I prefer going places and I prefer having stuff there to react to. It just feels mm -hmm. more fun. You know, it feels more like playing, being on the green right. screen. Like, I don't know. It's some weird experimental theater, you know, it's like minimalist yeah. theater. Yeah. There was a, uh, there was a movie Tintin came out not too long ago, Steven Spielberg yeah. movie. And, and I mean, I remember my kids loved it. It was like really unique and it was, it was all CG. It seemed, but yeah. um, you know, there was specific characters in there that you, you could tell that, that that's Andy Serkis. There's specific people you could tell who they were. Um, I, I might be wrong too, but I think uh, I think Tintin used a lot of like motion capture of performers and stuff rather yeah. than being all animated. So again, I, I like yeah. to think or believe that maybe there's some form of humanity that's captured in that versus yeah. just being fully animated and trying to make it completely real. I mean, how yeah, much? Look, how many of us remember? Was it? Was it the Final Fantasy movie or something? Or uh, I don't know. I forget what it was. But there was there was some sort of futuristic sci-fi that was completely CG, and it was maybe in like late two thousand, you know, middle two thousands or something, and just yeah, it looked like video game. It was like just wooden <laughs> performances and yeah. Well, the like, the motion. Fun. Happened, I think you're right. You're you're, you're right about Tintin because. I remember watching the behind the scenes and, and watching these guys like they're in a car in the movie and it shows them split screen with they're in a PVC pipe, uh, you know, box and yeah. they have a little a little fake steering wheel and they're like talking to each other. And so there's all the little dots on their face. I mean, I know we're going yeah, off yeah. a different, different thing, but but yeah, it, it's fascinating. But also, like you said, the soulless part, it's like. It, you know, they're throwing. Here's a fish. They're throwing a fish to him, and they and they show it. That it's a tennis ball, you know, and they're having to act, you know, act mm -hmm. like it's a fish. Yeah. It's like, yeah. you know, I, I'm I'm a more purist like you. I like to see the actual. The I'm, thing. I'm also. I, I don't know if you guys remember, but as as a kid, I remember like you know the the museum out here would have like a special effects display, and they'd have the full size Queen Alien and the power loader, and you know oh. models from Blade Runner. And as a kid. <laughs> I wanted to go see that stuff. It excited me, you know? Yeah. Uh, right. I, I remember, I mean, going to Man's Chinese Theater when they had, like, you know, Darth Vader was there and C-3PO <laughs> and I to put their footprints in the concrete. And yeah. I couldn't see anything as a kid, but I knew they were there, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But nowadays, you know, if the kids wanted to go visit, uh, you know, go see, I don't know, Transformers, you can't get Bumblebee walking over and putting his footprint in this concrete. Right, right. <laughs> Because he doesn't exist. Yeah, yeah, not on this plane. So yeah, and, uh, on another planet. I, I think that inspires people, and that I think that maybe some of that being able to see it and everything it made me think I could make that. Where I don't know if people feel that inspired nowadays. Like, oh, I could try and make that, or yeah, you know, or whether it people just do makeups for Instagram and just kind of go, oh, it's enough that I got a thousand likes, you know? Yeah, I Is think it, I think there's still there'll always be those those kids that just like you said you knew you what you wanted to do at 10 years old there's going to be a kid there's still tons of kids out there that I'm going to answer Dean's question here real quick Dean uh monster work sculpted or CGI um since I am kind of old school uh you know sculpted real practical effects I'm going to have to go John Carpenter's the thing I think any any effects guy from the 80s worth his salt would go with John Carpenter's The Thing. Uh, maybe maybe Legend, Ridley Scott's Legend, just Rob Bottin stuff, is, it still is amazing today. Um, there's lots of stuff I like today as well, but those are always my go-tos just because yeah. it's still great to this day and they live up to, they live up to CGI, you yeah. know? Yeah. And there's so many movies that don't. Yeah, yeah. No, and, and what's weird is there's there's some CG stuff that, that does, but it's older. I mean, I look back to say Jurassic Park, the the original one, yeah, and yeah. say some of that stuff. It's the it's the right mix. It's a clever mm -hmm. mix of real and CG, and mm -hmm. and you're never looking at the same thing 
you know, it's always changing. So you're never quite sure like, oh, that's just bad CGI. It's like, okay. no, that's real. No, and that's CGI. And but it's good. It's still it, it's still better than some of the stuff today, you know? Yeah. Yeah, that's for sure. And and so like the, the work that you did, um, how did that influence the work that you're doing now? Um, which weirds, I, I think the, I think any of the work I've done, it's, it's all just comes down to like technique and, and figuring out how to do things. So being a sculptor, whether it's in effects stuff or whether it's doing like toy figures and stuff, it's, um, it's using the same techniques. It's still sculpting and making silicon molds and casting urethane resins and, uh, even the ceramic stuff, um, I've gotten into ceramics in the last couple of years, and a lot of it's still sculpting. Uh, it's mold making. It's casting, uh, you know, ceramic clay instead of casting rubber. So mm -hmm. I mean, there's there's some things you got to figure out, and there's things that you got to change to make it work. But it's still the same techniques, the same skills, the same skill set. Yeah, yeah. I, lo I love this series that you're doing. Uh, oh, thanks. <clears throat> so cool. What now? Those th those are um, legit Japanese um, characters, right? Like um, they they have meaning behind them. In other words, there's. I uh, hate, the, I hate so naive. The, actual, the actual symbol or the actual or the cup itself, like what the, it represents, or the, the the face with the almost like the helmet with the angry face in there. I know that there's. Yeah, yeah. It's um, it's based on uh, it's it's the Bodhi Dharma, who's who's kind of like the. I think there's, they say like kind of the, the originator of the of Buddhist philosophy and everything. Okay. So they make these things called Daruma dolls over in Daruma, Germany. that's okay, yeah. Uh, and it's, it's, it seems to me like studying <clears throat> it, it's kind of their version of a uh, New Year's resolution. You kind of set a goal for yourself and you pencil in or you mark in one of the pupils. And when you attain that goal, you mark in the final pupil and return the doll to the temple and it's burned in this oh, and all this. I had no idea. Okay. Um, I, I just thought it was a cool image uh, and I thought it would make for a great mug. So I kind yeah. of stole the idea and stole the imagery. And it's it's weird. I've seen a couple of them lately that look very similar to mine. And when I really started looking at imagery online, uh, I think there might've been like woodcuts or interpretations of how he looked like. So. Uh, the idea is that that helmet looking thing is basically a robe and a, and a, and a cowl, you know? I got it. Okay. okay. So yeah. I think a lot of them look similar just because they're all sort of based on these same woodcuts and images and they're wow. just variations of it. The only thing I didn't do is I cheated. He, he had facial hair and the Japanese ones have oh, had right. painted in and I just, I didn't want to deal with sculpting hair and then molding and, and making oh, sure yeah. it's the leaf and comes yeah. off clean. So. <laughs> um, yeah. The first yeah. time I saw them, I thought it was a motorcycle helmet. <laughs> Actually, um, the I've I've done lots of different versions of it, and a buddy of mine asked, and I I don't have a photo of, but but um, he wanted me to paint one up like uh like from Rollerball, <laughs> the, the six yes. on the back and all that, and the, yes, the yeah. gray and orange helmet. So I did paint up one that you know actually would be a motorcycle helmet if it was one. Oh, that's so perfect. And what I like is that you, you didn't skimp on the back. Oh, wow. Um, yeah. It's like, this is beautiful. Yeah, that I got lucky. I found these kind of little carp, uh, these transfers that, uh, that you know, are ceramics as well. So you fire them on. Um, and it seemed to fit. I kind of wanted to do these aged ones that look like they've been around for a while. And, mm -hmm. So oh, They're, yeah, they're absolutely gorgeous. Thanks. You know, I love I, Mickey. I don't know if you have a picture of it, but the uh, the M80 you did recently. Oh yeah. Oh, that is the baddest looking cup I've ever seen. That I so I it, love it, it, it. I I have to admit, I only posted the one photo because I I fired it and I kind of spray. I sprayed what was supposed to be a, a satin finish on it, and it just came okay. out very plasticky looking. So I have to kind of remake it. It's it lost that kind of paper feel that it had. Well, yeah, well, that that picture I saw it, it looked it looked like it was paper. It, it brought me back to when I was a kid. We'd go down to uh, Rocky Point, Mexico, and yeah. down the beach, and we'd like you know be in a van uh, next to the beach, and then we'd buy a whole bunch of fireworks, 
you know, at night <laughs> and fire them off. And every one of them was more dangerous than the next. But those, oh, yeah. if, you, if you came home, and this is my grade school back in Phoenix, if you came home with a bag full of M80s, you were God. Yep. My, <laughs> so, so we'd always be like, yeah, how can we get these, you know? And we, I remember I, on countless occasions, I've, you know, smuggled explosives across the border, you know. You know <laughs> and, and my parents had no idea. And when I saw your mug, I'm like, oh my God, that's it. That's the one, you know. It's it's actually, I'm I'm considering doing a couple of different ones. I have, I have screen prints right now for, uh, I think, Black Devil. No, uh, is it, it, no, it was Black Cat and it was Red Black Devil. Cat. Works. Yeah, right, right. Uh, I've got those in the works now as well. Um <laughs> It's funny okay. you talking about uh, contraband fireworks. I think when I started at Dave Miller's, um, he expanded his shop after uh, Elm Street. And so we were like moving stuff over to this other shop. And I think I was kind of cheap labor. It was like, move all these molds on these shelves over to those shelves. And, <laughs> um, but he had a giant bag of like fireworks. Uh, and he, oh and he, he was very kind of secretive about it. He was like, yeah, yeah, those are, those are for such and such producer. Just, keep them on the back and you know but but it's like you said you you see fireworks like that and you you just kind of go oh these look you know you get that smell of it it's like mm. oh yeah yeah absolutely <laughs> the gunpowder oh my god <laughs> yeah the packaging is just as influential as actually what they are you know cuz yeah. uh, you don't even yeah. know what they they do sometimes you know you to buy them but uh, the black <laughs> cat it was this, such an iconic thing like, yeah definitely definitely yeah the more oh, the more yeah. warnings on them, the better. Yes, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you put your eye out, you all that good stuff. Yeah, and anything the size of your forearm, you know, is going to be a winner, right? Oh yeah. 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 <laughs> Did they used to say do not hold in light? Were those the ones? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, the the M eighty is like like the cup I did. It specifically says do not hold in hand. You know. Oh, all right. That's yeah. That's how I remember that. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I know you hear all those the stories about you know. Kids holding them in their hands, it's like, yeah, oof. Yeah, but oh, it's, yeah. They're not old stories either. I mean, the um, he's in the Super Bowl now, Jason Pierre Paul. That's right. Yeah. His hand is gone, right? He didn't read those instructions. Oh, nah, my God. Didn't believe him. Yeah. yeah. Oh, now he does. <laughs> Whoopsie. Maybe, yeah. a beer, maybe a beer or two was involved. I don't know. Maybe. No, 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 yeah, no. That never happens. Never happened. <laughs> Allegedly. So when you talked about um, at the beginning, you talked about like having some clay heated. I, I assume you're working with like a monster clay or something like that, right? It is. It's actually monster clay. Oh, is it a medium? Uh, it is medium. Yeah. Okay. Because I've I've got some. I just haven't I haven't had the courage to open the little cellophane top part. But yeah, there you go. Um, so what do you do to up. what do you do to keep it hot? You put it under a heat lamp or something, or what's the, um, what's the process? It's I I actually have a little convection oven in my in my little workshop. So okay. um, as long as it's as long as it's kind of warm, it'll it stays a little bit malleable. I also okay. keep a chunk of it in my hand. So oh, as long okay. as I so keep it in my warm. hand, the, the okay. warmth from my hand keeps it warm, and I can just pull off pieces and stick them on. Oh, all right, all right. So I mean, it's it's not super hard. I mean, it I. I actually want to try some of the hard. Um, I'm, I usually use, um, uh, I think it's called Chavant NSP medium, yeah. okay. um, which I, I'm a little bit more of a fan of that, but I haven't used monster clay as much. So I'm, I'm trying to force myself to use it a bit more because I, Oh, I love it. Okay. It looks okay. a little cleaner. It's, uh, you know, I, I, I like it and I, I definitely want to get a better feel for it. You know how it is. It's like, you grow up using one material, and that's tends to be your go-to. Oh, yeah. of course, yeah. You know, I mean, people people that grew up with monster clay are like, monster clay is it, and I'm like, oh, yeah, I like Chavant, you know. Yeah, <laughs> get out of my house. <laughs> I think the only the only clay I don't like, and and it's weird because I grew up using it in effects, is they used to have stuff called Roma Plastilina. Oh yeah, yeah. I, remember I remember that stuff. That's the gray stuff, right? It's, it's that gray green stuff, and yeah. your hands would smell like sulfur. And when you're sculpting, there'd be like little crystallized bits that you'd always have to pick out. Uh -huh. And if you melted it to like pour it for a mold, uh, you know, it, it would separate, and there'd be like this yellow puddle on there, and you'd have to stir it in, and the fumes right. of sulfur coming off of it. And yeah, nowadays, you know, any most of the silicones you use nowadays are inhibited by sulfur, so you can't use it. 
Uh, I was going to say they're very hard to make molds from right now. Yeah, yeah, now. So so everyone shifts. You know, the NSP in Siobhan is non-sulfur uh, product. So okay. you, know, you know that it won't uh, inhibit your clay. You know, monster clay is, is uh, a lot waxier than the other stuff. So there's oh, yeah, like a wax in yeah. this either. But I yeah, agree. so. Look at that. that was a cool. <laughs> oh, yeah. I love those. Yeah, I just did a bunch of those. I, I I think I had finished. I had the sculpt mostly done on a shelf for about a year and a half, and I finally was like, I got to finish this thing. Um, but I, I cast them up hollow and put like a little tea light inside, so it's kind of like having a year-round jack-o'-lantern on your desk. Oh, beautiful! Yeah, so kind of fun. Yeah, they, these are tremendous. I wanted to do kind of like a a, a, a jack-o'-lantern mug at one point, but I still haven't gotten around to that. It's all the ideas you kind of have. Yeah. I don't know about you guys. I think I've got too many ideas to do in my lifetime. Exactly. <laughs> do you ever we get exhausted? Like, um, I'll get, I'll have this, you know, I'll have four or five things I want to accomplish. And I'm, I'm like, oh, this is going to be great. I just need this, this, this. And by the time I'm done thinking about it, I'm like, maybe I'll just watch something on Netflix and let this simmer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, absolutely. Yeah. Now there's, exhausted. I mean, there's, there's times that uh, I think, well, we, we had a brief chat yesterday and there's definitely times that I'll, I'll have an idea for something or I'll start a sculpture and you kind of get it roughed in and you go, right. You know, you finally kind of feel like you've got your idea on paper or in clay and, and you're thinking, Oh, this is going to be so badass!" And you put it up on the shelf and you get up the next morning and you're just like, I, I just don't feel like working on it. So it kind of sits there and suddenly you realize it's been two years later and it's still on the shelf and, it's kind of like, should I finish it, or was that, was that really all I was supposed to do? Was block it out? Was that the idea? You know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'll have that problem too. Where I th uh, I'll, I'll like something to a point, mm -hmm. and then every now and again, I'll take a sort of a progress photo to see how it looks in a photo. Yeah. And I'll see it in a photo and just be like, well, this is a lost cause. It's not. <laughs> it's, it doesn't look anything like my brain sees it. Yeah, or sometimes, like I said, sometimes it's it's enough just to block it out. Like that's. That's all it was ever meant to be. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you just have to figure. I mean, I, I don't know. It's especially if it's your own thing. I, you just have to kind of go with what's exciting you at the time. And yeah, that's true. Do you typically come back to something like that? I mean, after it's on the shelf for a while, do you do, do you look at you know walk past it and you're like, wait a minute, and then just in the, in uh, the some, of it, some of it I will. Some of it like this thing. Like I said, this this thing was on the shelf for easily like two years before I finally kind of finished it. And, Oh, and cast okay. some. Good example. Yeah. There's other stuff though that yeah. Sometimes you look up and it's it's been there for two three years and you're like I'm, I'm never gonna come back to that. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yep. Do you ever melt them down or do you just hold on to them? Uh yeah. Every now and then I I have to I have to purge the shelf. You kind of go right. It's time to time to reclaim the clay and you know i'm obviously you know i'll go in and i'll take photos of stuff so i kind of have a record in case yeah i feel like in case i ever want to go back to it i can go wait a minute i did take a picture of that thing and you know yeah yeah and then like looking at my photos nowadays i realize it's so disorganized how would i find that thing you know <laughs> there's no folder that says old clay sculptures you know yep <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm, a, I'm a digital hoarder as well. I'm going through some stuff trying to find, I can never find yeah. stuff. And then magically I find, I'm like, oh my God, like I, I could totally use this. So it's actually pretty, it's cool, but it's also a bad system. I'm, I'm trying that. to, I, I'm actually fighting the, the physical hoarding right now. Like I think I've got a trunk full of old photos of stuff like oh. the Elm Street stuff, like before there were digital cameras. Mm -hmm. So I've got a trunk full of photos that I want to scan to increase my digital hoarding, but to reduce yeah. practical clutter. I'll give I'll give you some incentive for that. Um, yeah. So, as if 2020 wasn't a horrible, you know, uh, year last year, um, we were right uh, the mountains right here uh, in Sierra Madre. So there was fires, right? So we were right. for about a month um, in fear of, uh, you know, having to bug out. And uh, 
that's kind of like interesting feeling because you go, Oh my God, like if I had to leave here right now and pick up something, what would I pick up? Yeah. So if, if those pictures are things that you definitely want to hold on to, or if they burn up and it's your last memory of them, um, yeah. I, uh, scan them, uh, just take some time to scan them and, and it's, it's your legacy. And it's like, I, it, it, I feel like I have to just for the posterity. I mean, the truth yeah. is like, they've, they've lived in my garage for, 20 years and chances are I haven't looked at them in 20 years, but I feel yeah. like I should still save some record of what, what I did and what they are, you know? Yeah. 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 For I mean, that, we all that, that tell all picture book one year of people yeah. to sit back and go back in my day, we yes. made stuff out of rubber. <laughs> <laughs> well, it'll be your metamorphosis. So there's a, there's a quote. Oh, there's a, uh, sorry, there's a question from Dean. Uh, Mike, knowing uh, when he was a kid that art is what he wanted to do. Um, uh, oh, I thought that was a question. Yeah, yeah, I got you, Dean. Um, I would say that's very true. I mean, I have to be honest, adult life does constantly try and work its way into my life and remind me that I'm not. But, but uh, the fact that I still make toys and have a shelf full of sculptures that I'm excited about Hopefully that that kid is still fighting to uh to keep making monsters, you know. Oh, I'll say he is. Yeah, you 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 win in the battle. <laughs> <laughs> you had a question, Paul? Yeah, real quickly, I just wanted to know on Blade, you weren't the accountant, right? What's this? You weren't the accountant on Blade. <laughs> oh, on the movie Blade, no, no, <laughs> no, no. Um, Tax prep. Oddly, oddly enough, the um the yeah, uh, the director on it, uh, the guy I worked for, Gary, uh, worked with the director. The director is Steve Norrington, who used to do effects in England. So they were kind of friends from back in the day. So we did, well, we didn't do, well, it's weird. We kind of started off doing just like a couple of small effects here and there because Steve was like, I want my buddy Gary doing some stuff. And then as the film went on, um, Steve's, Steve's, I think Steve would admit he's kind of a tough guy to work for, especially effects wise, because knowing effects, he has a very high bar and he knows what he wants. So uh, if you deliver something that isn't up to snuff, he's going to call you out on it. Uh, and I think he called out a number of effects shops on some of the stuff they did. So some of the stuff we actually, in the end, wound up going in and augmenting and fixing and changing. Um, again, it's one of those things at Gary's shop where I'd, I'd be on it. I'd be at a shop. I'd work somewhere else. I'd come back and he'd be like, Hey, guess what we're doing? You know? And it's like, Oh, we're back on blade. And I think, <laughs> I think my honey blade story was that they had, they changed the ending. Like the, the Deacon frost character, I guess was originally supposed to turn into like this sort of personification of, of blood and vampirism, kind of this, uh, big tornado of blood or something. And they had this <laughs> whole thing planned. And, I guess in the end they kind of did this CG thing that they kind of dubbed the the blood Kool, uh, the Kool Aid tornado or something like that, and it just didn't look right. So they went back and filmed all the stuff now with the darts, where all the darts are hitting him, and he's and he starts to blow up into this big giant yeah. thing. Um, and they did that because the there were a couple of like assassins, I guess, in a hallway that we had done the same thing. We had done these big giant heads that they morphed between. And that got such a good reaction that they were like, why don't we just do that to him, except it'll be his whole body and he'll blow up. Oh. <laughs> so I think I was I was at another shop. They had, at Gary's shop, they had sculpted the big the insert pieces and they'd sculpted the makeup on him and done all this stuff. And the effects guys were like, great, it's time to blow it up. Right? And they had this big full size body that they rigged with primer cord and all this stuff. And they went to blow it up and they kind of, hit the button and it kind of went <laughs> and just like didn't go anywhere. And they were like, Oh, well, shoot. We, they kind of really loaded it up and it kind of went Boosh, and like fell over and they're like, this isn't going to work. So I think uh, if I remember right, it's like two weeks before the movie opens in theaters, I get a call from Gary and he's like, dude, uh, these big giant body things, we filmed all the practical stuff with them, but it's not going to work for the explosion. So 
I think he and I together in about 12 hours sculpted like a little, you know, 12 inch tall version of the wax, of the figures in wax. We kind of did them hollow, you know, sculpted and rotocast these wax figures, put little pants on it and stuff. And two weeks before it opened, they went and they shot insert shot to this wax thing blowing up that they put in, you know, they, it's because it's all warped and digital and morphing anyway. So they put these exploding bodies in. So I kind of was on blade at the beginning when we did a couple of things. I was on blade in the middle when we did these, you know, assassin bloated heads. And then I came in at the end and we did the ending for it two weeks before it opened in, in theaters, which is wow. insane. <laughs> That's nuts. Wow. But I guess that. <laughs> Why it's like I always go back to Gary's shops just because he's he always had kind of strange and fun and interesting. Just they just hey, we're gonna do this, we're doing this, we're making the ending for the films. It's kind of fun yeah. stuff to go back to. Not bad. So, is it is it uh, is it high drama when you're making uh, mugs? Uh, like this? No, no. Uh, I'm, not, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just teasing you. I, I, obviously, there. When you're doing that that work with, in Hollywood, it's always like last minute. Um, we need it yesterday and everything. Yeah, that that stuff's high drama. I have to be honest. Me, me and ceramic mugs. That's that's like I'm really usually pretty chill about that. Yeah. Just as um, I've come to the realization, and and I was told this. I was told like by ceramics people because. Ceramics is a weird thing. Like something you put in the kiln, you might do the exact same thing you did last time and it just doesn't work or something mm -hmm. happens and it's like, it's a different color and you go, why did it do that? Like, like that, um, the, the M80 mug, you know, I, I had sprayed these with the satin, that one I sprayed with the satin and it went really glossy and red oh, oh. and it just didn't look right. So I, I just, I really do ceramics because I enjoy it and it's fun. And I just kind of, I, I don't worry about it so much. If something doesn't turn out, I'm like, Oh, I'll, I'll do it again. Or I'll make another one. It'll be better. Did you, did you go, go and get a wheel um, a long time ago? Or did you, did you, did you always kind of have that? I mean, the, the, I know you have to have a, a wheel of some sort to get good at, at, uh, 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 at I, I have a wheel and I'm not that good at the wheel. <laughs> Um, these, the cups that you have up there, those are, uh, hand built. So you basically roll out slabs and, and I, I stamp all the texture into them and carve it okay. in. And then cool. you can fold it around into a cylinder and I attach it to a base that I kind of press mold in a, a plaster mold. Huh. Um, okay. I did, I used a wheel to make the form for the foot. And then okay. I molded that. I can, I can use it for a bunch of different things. And duplicate it and then have yeah the same size yeah. every time. Okay. And then okay. and then the, the Daruma mugs you showed before, those are those are basically just sculpted in monster clay and okay. then molded and slip cast. So there's oh, really wow. no no throwing at all there. Wow. Okay. I, I can I can throw, but I'm not I'm not that good. So it's easier for me to to sculpt stuff and to hand stuff. Got it. And my feeling is if I'm going to put the time into a sculpture, especially because the glazing side of it can be so unpredictable, I'd yeah. rather take the time to do a good sculpture, take the time to do a good mold, and then make like 10 or 12 of them that if half of them don't turn out because glazing is bad, I don't lose that sculpture and all that time. Ah, uh, yeah, of course. Of yeah, course. Like, it's better to make lots of them and let everybody. Yeah. Yeah, I guess, I guess that was going to be my point about the, uh, uh, you know, working in a very high stress creative industry. Um, yeah, it, it may make you want to do uh, ceramic uh, uh, cups like you're doing right now. And, and yeah. uh, I mean, th these are beautiful. And, and yeah, I think the the beauty of it is like, uh, you know, I, I guess, you know, you, you have to be in that environment to understand how stressful it really is unrealistic sometimes people and deadlines and and budgets and just all the stuff that's not your problem but becomes your problem um this yeah. looks like a, a a way better outlet uh and use yeah. of your time <laughs> yeah no it's well i mean the truth is and i've 
I'm again, may, I don't know, maybe I'm maybe I'm odd in this. I know there's people in the effects industry who uh, it is while they're passionate about it, it is still very much just a job. You know, they'll go job, and do it. Yeah. They'll go home at the end of the day and make some food and watch some TV and, you know, have a drink and get up the next day and go to work. And I tend to come home and sculpt and make molds and make mugs and make toys and I, even though I'm kind of at home on my own time, I tend to kind of still like to do uh, effects kind of stuff, even though it's not for a film, it's just my own stuff. I guess that answers so the, the question about the kid, right? The kid's still alive and kicking. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. If, if, it, if, it, if it still enamors you after a long day of work to go do it again, that, uh, that sure yeah, tells that. But it's, you know, I mean, for me, it's... It, it's fun, you know, it's, it's like the day stuff. You just, you have to kind of treat that as the job. And then when you're home, it's, if you enjoy sculpting, I mean, I mean, you guys, you guys were saying you're, you do stuff other than the pumpkin carving, right? But I mean, I'm guessing that if you kind of had your choice to sit down and carve, you'd probably sit down and carve just cause it's fun, you know? A hundred percent. Yeah. Oh yeah. I, I I have a small piece of clay. Like I can't sit still. So if I don't yeah. have something in my hand, I'll take that piece of clay and just knead the clay and constantly yeah. just try and make little shapes and little faces. And yeah. So as soon yeah, as soon as I get a fork or a knife, I'm I'm drawing faces in the mashed potatoes and I mean it, <laughs> yeah, seriously, it keeps me up at night, you know. If I, I used to always say, I mean I, I joked, but it's kind of true. If I had a design or an idea in mind. It would literally keep me awake unless I kind of get up and try and do something to start the, the design. Whether it's mm -hmm. pick up a piece piece of clay and just rough it out or something, but I kind of felt like I had to do something, otherwise it would keep me awake. Yeah, right. yeah, that's that. That's the thing that um, you know Matt and Paul talk about. This they're not um, artists by trade. Uh, mm -hmm. I am. I've been a graphic designer and artist um, yeah. for thirty years, and. Um, so I'm used to, I mean, I'm used to working 18 hours a day on art. Um, but that's the one thing that Matt and Paul have been, um, probably struggling with, um, is, is, uh, is what does it take to make it as a career? I, and, and we've talked about this before many times, like, like, what is your advice on this? Uh, Mike is, um, is, I, I I I don't really know what my my exact question is, but is it is it something that that you're uh, how, you have to be consumed make, with it all day, right? I I think so. I mean, well, either that or like I said, I know there's people in the industry who are probably just really good at what they do, and they'll they'll tend to get hired again and again because they're really good. But you know, and I'm not saying really. I think passion doing is maybe just just the unwillingness to you know I don't know if there's people who say like I really couldn't do anything else I mean that it's kind of true for some people some people are like I just I couldn't do anything else you know yeah um I, I don't for, know what I, I mean do. even that's for dark sure <laughs> even with, even with covid and stuff I, I have to be honest you kind of go well you know, if, if film is shut down, which it kind of is, so what do you do, you know? And the truth is, I kind of buckled down and went, right, so I've got to start doing stuff here that even though it isn't film work, uh, you know, I, I do 3D prints for people on the side. I probably should be doing a bit more digital, thing, but again, I, I tend to pick up the clay and just make stuff. Um, so I do yeah. digital prints. I mold and cast things for people on the side. I, I sell cups, you know. So we kind of still hone those skills and keep those skills going for what you enjoy to do. Yeah, speaking of so skills, I think that's what well, uh, uh, Matt. One second, one second, Matt. Um, hey, Mike. Oh, right, I'm yeah. I'm yeah. gonna I, I'm gonna actually have you uh, go out, um, leave okay. the studio, and then come back in. So just to refresh a little bit, so we can. Uh, okay. You're gonna get a little pixelated, so. Okay. Uh, yeah, uh, so, let me see. So go out and come back, and we'll. Uh, okay. So we'll close, these close, out, close out the window and log in. Yeah. So so leave leave the studio and then um, rejoin with that same link. 
Okay. Hang on. Okay. Yeah. But I, I figured you had a good question, you bastard. Thanks a lot. <laughs> hey, whatever, dude. Uh, You're going to have to sit on it for a little while. While we're they, doing they that, um, in case you forgot, Mickey has the controls. That's right. That's right. Sit on it, Fonzie. Oh. <laughs> hey, that is perfect. Crystal clear. Yeah, Look yeah. at you. That's, that's, right. that's and that's that's I called it. IT. That's what I also do. I do IT as well. <laughs> so go. everybody wants to see uh, the progress of what everybody's working on. Uh, Dean uh, has, uh -huh. has demanded it, by the way. Oh, Dean, dear God. <laughs> so let's start with you, Matt. You, and you had your question. You can ask your question while you. Uh, okay. You show. So I got. I went with, I couldn't get away from the eye patch. I don't know if I'm going to keep it, but right now he's got an eye patch. And, uh, Matt, don't feel bad. I'm turning an eye patch on right now as you're, as you're showing off yours. Yeah, so see? Pirate like. So, so this is how he started. And then I, so right now, so it, it's completely early, right? But um, I, when, when we got the, the emotion of hysterical, I, I, I've got a mirror here. I went like that and kind of, yeah. Now I'm kind of mimicking that, but, and the crazy thing is like, so he's got a, I figured a mustache cause he's going to have that, but right now it's just blocked in. It could be something else, but, and then I have plenty of room to do some kind of beard if we want, but, uh, anyway, so he's early, early, early process, but, uh, nice. You're going to make it nice. Paul. Oh, what? No. <laughs> oh, look at that. I'm still roughing. I, I got a lot of rough work to do. Still roughing it in. Oh, I gotta get the, good, right, the hysterical. Uh, just you know, got the eyes kind of. Oh yeah, I love surprise. the brow. And uh, I'm gonna give him some nasty pirate teeth. I'm gonna try and do a big, full, nasty beard. Mm -hmm. No eye patch. No eye patch. Yeah. Put the eye patch tonight, boys. It sets me apart. Yeah, that's low hanging fruit for you. Forget that's it, it, right? Uh, you damn know, it! I'll give him a scar across the eye, and I'll draw the, the eye patch. There you go. There you go. He's just too tough to wear one. <laughs> and Mike, what, what do you got? So still, again, very rough, guys. Yeah. yeah he's got yeah. no arms on yet, but he's oh, got cool. it. He's got oh, that's so cool. Like, eye patch. And I think he's going to be swigging from like a, a rum barrel or a rum jug. <laughs> oh. I'm give him his arm. Yeah, I love that. Little short, stumpy looking. I might convert <laughs> one of these legs into a peg leg. Oh, beautiful. Definitely. Wow, just just a full-on cliched uh, pirate, yeah. You know what's hilarious is like I huh? give him a big giant pirate hat too. Nice. Oh, beautiful. We the whole fun the, the the fun part is we were talking and I can I can every now and then get a glam, glimpse at that Paul's and, and you I just couldn't see anything because we were just chatting away and then so to it's, see that it's low. You, I don't have the stand here. But it's amazing progress, and I can see like the the character in him already. This is anyway, it's just fascinating stuff. Michael, yourself, uh, where's the? Um, I, 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 I worked down this uh, beer. That was uh, there. You go. <laughs> did you finish? I did. I did. I finished. I, I'll post it on Instagram. My my empty glass. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice work. A pirate walks into a bar and he has a steering wheel hanging from his private parts. And the bar looks at the pirate and says, hey, you know, you got a steering wheel hanging off your private parts. And the pirate looks down and he says, "R, it's driving me nuts. Oh. <laughs> driving me nuts. Hi-oh. <laughs> uh, <laughs> So you, you're you've been actually carving some some uh, vegetables here, Mike, uh, right? This, this last October, that is that is actually the very first thing that I've carved in my life. Those yeah. lips are outstanding. Those wrinkles are great too. Yeah. <laughs> wow, it's very, it's very Grinch. I think my daughter was watching yes. Grinch in the other room when I was carving it. And you yeah. got a you got a set of voice there. I was talking over you. Sorry, I was just. I look. I'm admiring the set of Villafane tools. Yes, <laughs> I managed That's to pick those up. I actually, because, uh, I, I mean, the truth is, I've, I have, you know, I have like rakes and things. All of these things yeah. you can use all those for carving as well. You know, loops and rakes. Absolutely. But I kind of was like, oh, sorry, hang on. Oh, yeah. ah, there you go. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 
but I was kind of like, you know, something if I'm going to carve, I, I kind of wanted one of those, uh, uh, the old paring knife uh, that looked really kind of enticing. And at the same yeah. time, I was, well, I could probably use them for car uh, for sculpting if I didn't use them for carving all the time. So, yeah. Uh, and I'm a tool whore. I've got like buckets of tools and everything. <laughs> Join the club. Yeah. Well, have a few more, right? Yeah. You never have enough tools. <laughs> But yeah, it was kind of fun. Uh, I think I told you guys in this little side meeting, I said it's quite terrifying to be like used to like like this. I mean, like, if I carve off the face or the eye and I go, oh, I don't like the nose, I'll carve it off and I'll ball up some clay new nose on. Can't do that. Well, you can do it with carving, but it's trickier. It is. And you don't want to keep go. having lots and lots and lots of stuff. You kind of want to make the use of what's there. And so, so yeah, getting what we, into purely subtractive sculpting was definitely uh, was definitely eye opening. Yeah, it's it is you do have to do some planning, but when it comes to uh, like adding on the back like, or, or adding on like let's say a big nose or tongue or an yeah. eye or something like that, um, cutting from the back of the same piece you generally works. Um, sure. Like you know, cutting out and and the main thing is too when you're cutting, even a butternut will have variation in color. So if you're going to try to do a nose, really big nose, and you take a butternut or a piece of pumpkin or something like that from another piece, it, it, the color won't be the exact same. So it'll it'll look it'll look foreign. And so there's so that little you cut in the back and use the same. Uh, yeah, that that always works because it's going to be the same color. But the, the fun part out of the bottom. There you go. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> to check the page for rings, you know, whatever it is. Um, but yeah, it's um it's it's a fun it's a fun uh, problem to have sometimes because it is, it is exacting. Uh, you know, you have to get it just right. Otherwise somebody's eye goes right to that, you know, cut and paste. Yeah. It, you know, so it is tough. Which can be great if that's your intention. I mean, like I, I know you had mentioned using a, a bit of potato for the swirl and the hair. So if you yeah. want an eye drawn to something, you can use a different material or a different color and, yes. super yes. and take it on there with some toothpicks and, Right, right. Because a lot I mean, of times um, you mentioned Ray Villafan. I, mean, I, I love when he uses the the bits of potato for the eyes and stuff, or he'll exactly. use uh, you know yeah. a different fruit for a tongue, and it and it has like a pinker quality to it. And you yeah. got eat potato. Great. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's it's yeah, and and that does have a contrast because everything we typically do is monochrome. I mean, it's so we're just yeah. working in we're working in the depths to get shadow out of it. So oh yeah, it's very like, all, all you really, all you really have is just the depths. Yeah. So you can blind it out or you can like, I'm not very good at doing this on the fly, but, but yeah, if you go with something with a whole, the light, the lighting matters. Um, yeah, guess, yeah. 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 Well, Cause I mean, and you'll, you'll even attest to this. I'm sure is that when you're sculpting, while it has a lot of depth to it, it's almost like sculpting in relief on, a, on a shape, you know, that some of it isn't as deep as it looks. It's really right. creating shadow and form. It is. Yep. Yep. And, and the, the master of it all is the camera at the end, right? Just making yeah. sure you have the right picture um, to, to tell the story. Because even if it's turned a little, an inch, it could tell a different story because of how the lighting is on it. Yeah, you know? yeah. Oh, it's that, that scary lighting. Yeah, scary lighting, happy lighting. Yeah. Scary. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> happy, scary, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, and that you see how important lighting is just in general. You don't even you kind of kind of take it for granted, but um, especially for and you know, especially for what even Matt was showing, uh, the lighting actually um, the camera is really has a tough time adjusting to this color. Yeah, you know, so that's that's always. I mean, you have to get really good at at photography as well with the uh, iPhone or or whatever yeah. device you're using. I mean, truthfully, um, ideally. And you guys tell me if I'm wrong, but ideally you would almost want to sculpt in the lighting that you're going to present it in just so that you can kind of see where the shadows are going to lay. Absolutely. Oh, Absolutely. Yeah. Which even Absolutely. means needing to know that before you start sculpting, kind of. And that's a, that's a really great point that's never really been brought up before. If you have an overhead light, and that's typically where we're going to have you know, Paul showing it, yeah. That that's typically where we're going to photograph it. Uh, the overhead light means means the world. If you have something coming from the side or the front, you you, you may not catch it until you're trying to photograph it at the end. You're like, oh wait a minute, this this thing just yeah. blows. So yeah, 
You know, I wonder, I, it, it, it just kind of occurred to me that um, when you go to shop for jewelry, they have that special lighting, you know, in the top that actually makes all the jewelry Art like look a lot. <laughs> right. I wonder um, if you guys uh, were to use something with that, would that help or, I don't know, enhance it potentially um, looking into the, something like that. Um, just the way that the light uh, spreads and stuff like that. It's interesting. I'll, I'll uh, do my research and I'll come back to you on that. Please one. do. We, we just don't, I just don't talk for jewelry. That's, that's <laughs> I can make my scalp look much shinier. And I, I think you lost some when you said jewelry light, Michael. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 No one shops for jewelry here. <laughs> well, you guys got jewelry in the mail. <laughs> that's, oh, right. that's right. Good point. Wow. <laughs> See, I'm bringing it around. You are cool. Here we go. That's a yes, beautiful jewelry. Mike, I'd love to ask you, can I ask a question about Men in Black? Yeah. So so the episode you were on for Men in or the episode, the 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 one where the giant bug ate um yes. I think it was um Chris so, uh, uh, Tommy Lee Jones. Tommy Lee Jones, that's right. Um yeah. so so did you now when you're when you're when you're I guess the, I just I love that one scene, but when it comes to like the um using your effects and and um let, let's say you created something that's going to be part of that scene for instance right are are you Which physically I, I, there? Did, I did and i have a tremendous story about all of that but but yes sorry oh, no, i, I, I want to hear it. I, I um but are you physically oh. there for those for those filmings to see that it goes i mean because that's your baby you know like let's say you're you did a you did a, a creature face or something like that is that is that typically something you're you're physically there for, or they they just send you home and, and we got this kind of thing? Uh, yes, we're typically there. Um, okay, it, it will perfectly lead into my story, though, Matt. Okay, all right, love it, love it. So, add add Ricks on Men in Black. Um, I was kind of part of a team. Uh, first of all, there's there's a whole team of like you know fifty plus people there, all working on stuff, sure. all in different departments. And the, I was kind of called in as part of a team that uh, if there was something in the script that we weren't really sure how we were going to do it, uh, I was part of a crew who would typically start building something, kind of concept something, start building it, uh, shoot tests of it, and kind of present it as here's how we're thinking about doing it, or here's three ways that we've thought of to do this what looks like it's something you want to do. Uh, okay. One of those, one of the effects was the, the Tommy Lee Jones being swallowed. And originally in the storyboards, they basically wanted an effect. The way they described it to us was that the bug grabs him, it lifts him up, the jaw distends and it kind of drops him in. And you see him in, a, in this is in like a shot, you see him kind of going down inside the bug and okay. in his abdomen, which is distended, you see him pushing around in there oh. looking for the gun because it's eaten the gun. And, you know, and, and basically you're seeing this through the stomach of the bug that's kind of translucent. And they wanted like his, his hand pushing out, like stretchy. Oh, like wow. Okay. <laughs> so we had built, um, Basically, we I think we started off with this stuff called hot melt adhesive. It's it's like this really super ultra stretchy, clear stuff. And our concept was we kind of built like a, a bit of it and we kind of filled it with water because they said they want him in water and in pushing around and stuff floating around in there. And we eventually wound up building like this giant, I want to say the size of a bathtub um, of this stuff that it was basically a four by eight sheet. And we put about 30 gallons of water in it. It was 30, yeah, about 30 gallons of water. And we had one of our guys in the shop, you know, we dunked, we dunked him in there, you know, from his waist down, trying to push around in there. And what we found was that 30 gallons of pressure from the water pushing outward, you can't actually push your hand out because your hand is oh. exerting less force than the water. So it just oh, yeah. kind of, it just kind of, bobbles oh. this thing around oh. and every time we'd show them a test of it they go can we see something bigger can we see and finally we went 
we can't unless we're going to start dumping money into this. We can't physically build it bigger because when you think about the weight of water, sure, like a sure. tub's worth of water, you know, we looked at the weight of it and we went, "This is crazy." We're going to have to weld something out of steel, and we're going to have to start actually making like you know industrial reinforcement because it's it's just not safe at a certain point. Right, right. <laughs> and if, and then like the test that we showed them with the guy in the water, they went. Uh, we don't think that's going to work. But, um, so we came up with other ways. We kind of stuck the stuff over him and, you know, filmed it upside down so that it's just him under the material, like on a form. And we did all, all these things and they kind of didn't pick any of them. They finally went, the director just, the, he says that it's it's all about like a, a specific texture he's looking for. We, we want okay. a certain texture to it that we're not seeing. And basically I, I finally said, can he send me a sample, you know, a, a picture of the texture? And it turned out it was a little section of the of the bug, kind of the stomach. He's like, that texture. I literally made a four by eight plaster table, you know, replicating this texture in okay. squares, made a whole big sheet, made this big giant sheet of latex, because they're like, we're just going to put him in this thing and film it, uh, and it'll be like the camera's in there with him. So I had this... I don't know. I think I made four of them and stuck them together. It was like eight foot by, you know, 16 foot giant latex sling that was all painted like the bug. <laughs> and they flew me out to New York with it. And I think it's the only time I've ever been to New York. My my recollection of it was like sitting on the steps of a building with the sling. Uh, it smelled like this for the entire <laughs> Uh, they were they were shooting the pawn shop scene straight across the street. So I'm sitting there, and they're like, oh, I love that great, scene. Great, yeah, yeah. and I'm sitting there, and I'm watching them film stuff, and I'm breathing in the piss, and it gets <laughs> to the day, and they just go, we're not going to get to you today. I'm like, oh, wow. Okay. You know what? As a matter of fact, we're probably not going to get to it this week, so leave the sling. We're sending you back. So I went back, came back out here, Um. I, I didn't know until the film was released what that bit looked like, but we were on set the, or actually no, we were in the shop and they had, they had taken the bug because we built literally a full scale, two full scale Edgar bugs. Oh my God. Beautiful puppets. We're talking probably, probably you know, lots of money because oh, it was yeah. the biggest thing we were building on the show. Apparently they showed the director, director like, now everyone was very appreciative. Director was like, "Looks fantastic, looks wonderful, looks." I I couldn't be happier, but I have no idea how I'm going to shoot this thing. And oh. at the end of the day, ILM stepped in and just went, "We have a solution. Wheel in the the you know tennis ball on a stick." They went, "Don't uh, worry, we'll take uh, care of it." Damn it! Thank you very much. Pull the puppet off to the side, and the puppet is nowhere in the movie. Oh. And as for my giant latex sling, if you watch the film, there's a moment that he swallowed. There's a moment that the camera's panning down and you see the stomach kind of moving. Yeah. And there's there's a momentary cut where the screen just goes like a weird yellowy color. And then it cuts away. And I'm convinced that that is the latex sling. And they tried oh. to have him behind it backlit a silhouette or something it's the weirdest cut in the movie and i i just i'm like why you put that in there it doesn't make any sense so oh. so yeah. <laughs> what there's an times, awesome story there's times that you want to be there and you want to make sure that it looks cool and it's done right but it doesn't always work out that way you know they they yeah. can i mean at the end of the day it's their call and if they don't want to use the the super cool, awesome puppets, they're not going to. And if they're going to shoot the latex sling so that it looks crappy, then they're going to. Yeah. So where do those puppets yeah. go? Because they, they uh, end up somewhere. Do you, uh, do you... those, those puppets, uh, Rick had like the most amazing display room uh, that I've ever had the opportunity to walk through or to help oh, wow. together. Wow. Uh, they were in the display room along with like a Mighty Joe Young and yeah, oh. that's their pieces and wolf pieces. And uh, I think there was maybe a Harry from Harry and the Hendersons. I mean, oh, there's, man. 
I mean, just really cool stuff. There's a Grinch. There was, uh, I think, a Bela Lugosi figure in there. You know, oh Ed Wood, and it was oh. just really cool. But it, they're they're in a display room, so like no one will ever see them. Um, Rick's retired now, so I I I think the pieces may have all gone to auction. Um, oh. If they're yeah. anywhere now, they're probably in the hands of some collector who's the had collector, to spend yeah. You know? Yeah. Wow. Wow. That's, 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 that's almost sad because I mean, I, again, because I want them all. That's why. Again, it's that kid in me that wanted to go see that stuff. I kept saying, you know, it's, it's a shame that they didn't like open a museum or, or yeah. do a, just a museum display to go, Hey, come and check out this stuff. Cause exactly. A, a, a movie yeah. FX museum. Yeah. Uh, oh my God. I would, I would go to that all day. I, oh man. Yeah. Yeah. There's a, there's a lot of stuff out here in LA. I think that, um, you, you have to find it. They have, they have some displays and stuff like that, but you have to kind of find them and you, you'd be surprised yeah. what you can find. Um, it's a bit of a, a treasure hunt, but it's like worth it <laughs> in the end. You know, I like, like Jim Henson had a, a, a thing. It was for, for a very short yeah. time, but it was everything, and it was like really amazing. But you had to oh get in; God. it was really tough to get in at the time. I, that was at Skirball Center, right? Yes, it like, was. Yes, it was. The last couple of years. Oh. Um, wow. Yeah. A lot of the Henson stuff is now in Atlanta, Georgia, at the Puppetry Museum. There's a lot of dark right. crystal stuff and stuff. Oh, really? I was really happy to go see. Oh, oh. Yeah, it just kind of winds up in places that you go. How many people see this? And you know, it's uh, wish yeah. it was here because I can then go see yeah. it. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, so if there's anything like that, we'll definitely tell people because it's like it's worth seeing. I mean, obviously it's different in these times, but uh, yeah. yeah, there's a lot of stuff that goes on now um, that that used to go on, and you'd be like, "Oh my god!" Like I would totally go see that in a second. Like I tried to go see that Jim Henson thing; it was impossible to I, I missed, get into I it. it. Yeah, I missed it. Yeah. Oh, the funny thing is, I think I was working over at Henson's at the time. Right. Oh right. That whole uh, that whole compound is good. Actually, there was supposed to be a um, George Lucas was supposed to have a a thing. It was supposed to be down by the L.A. Coliseum. There was going to oh, be right. a whole museum for that as well. But I don't know what happened to that. Um, yeah. So yeah, that that would Wait, that thing so would be humongous. Mike, you just said something just like piqued my interest. So you work for Henson? I was going to say that uh, just very it. briefly, very okay. briefly. There's a there's a Henson's out here here in a, so. I worked very briefly there. Um, it was right before they did uh, the Dark Crystal TV series. So um, we were actually okay. building some suits for a, a theme park in Dubai. And I got oh, to wow. build um, hand controls for, uh, they did a, a film test for the uh, the um, scientist Skeksis. They did a film test for the Dark Crystal Netflix series. Okay. So. That's that's my my only chance. I, I had a chance to work on Dark Crystal, but I was at another shop, and I uh, oh. I had wow. to choose between abandoning the shop or going working at uh, Henson's. And let's just say there was somebody working at Henson's who I had a slight bump with, uh, and there, there was certain wording used when they they said like, "Hey, we'd like you to come in and." So and so just wants to talk with you and make sure you're on the same page. And uh, uh, that sounds like code that you know either you step in line or you're going to work the show under my thumb. And I just went, uh, I'd rather enjoy Dark Crystal and remember it the way that yeah. keeps me happy and keeps that kid yeah. alive. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't want to work under somebody's thumb and just have that joy crushed. So exactly. yeah, I chose you to stay in the shop I was at and not burn a bridge and not have a you know, a childhood uh, uh, enjoyment ruined for me. Yeah, I yeah. know. You you would rather uh, fire a, a mug in a kiln than uh, take someone's shit for uh, months. <laughs> yeah, I think so. Oh, okay, well, fair. Yeah. Good on you. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, so Mike, uh, you know, it. We've actually almost gone ninety minutes. I told you this would go fast. Oh, oh I've, I've and. Um, I know. It, and it's, uh, it's Dean so Murray uh, says we should definitely get a photographer in to talk about lighting. Definitely. I can, uh, I have a few people that I can reach out to and uh, you know, sure. I, um, man and Paul are both doing the hair. Do, do you have any tricks you want to share uh, when doing the hair? Uh, uh, carving hair. 
Carving yeah. here. Yeah, that's um Either I, way, I, I use stuff. uh I use paste, styling paste. Go ahead. <laughs> you got the flow, the lettuce. I don't have any tips because I'm not very good at it. I'm actually looking for tips. So those are no, looks pretty good to me. The only thing I ever think about is, yeah, that's perfect, Paul. I mean, that's, that's what I do. I mean, I, I block in the, the shape of what the, the um, mustache or beard or hair is going to look like, and then just kind of let the, uh, the little tiny uh, triangle tool take its, take its path. That's kind of how I do it. Yeah. Nice tongue. Cool. Yeah, Look at oh, wow. hey, work on work on big forms first, like getting the flow of the hair and large chunks of hair down. And then yeah. deal with all the little tiny strands and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So you just start and laying then, lots and lots of little strands. It just starts looking really busy and it doesn't have form or flow to it. Exactly. And in pumpkins, if we can if you can just leave extra room there, you leave space there to do those little strands for later. That's the hardest part to remember is just leave material there. But, yeah, right. I think that's kind of about leaving the uh, blocking out the form of that, just leaving that mass there for a beard. Oh, those are cool. Yeah, Maybe even a good one. That look that's that's even a good thing. Like if you found a different pumpkin or something with a different color, you could almost do like the hair helmet and kind of, you know, yeah, lay exactly. it, yeah. right, right. layer it on. Yeah. yeah. So I wanted to flip through uh, some of my last slides here. I mean, these they, these are so amazing. Um, yeah. nice. I mean, like they, they, this is tremendous. Uh, so good, so much character. Uh, the, even the unfinished work <laughs> looks so so great. These are, um, these are a couple of buddies in my. Every New Year's we do this uh, this kind of New Year's gnome challenge. So we sculpt. Oh, uh, nice. We we have to do these little three inch gnomes because it makes them real easy to mold and cast and trade with people okay little, but every year i try and do i try and do like i'm trying to do happier looking ones but every year mine tended to be really kind of monstrous mm -hmm. but i still got roped into doing a zombie gnome this year so i like oh, I it. it i i like the also the uh, seasonal challenge we, we'll have to remember yeah. that as well yeah that's something we should put um I out there it. as well um more mugs. Uh, more I thought bad. this was really interesting. The the uh, pipe that yeah. that you did here. This Some, someone said they wanted one. Uh, they they basically said either Pennywise or Jigsaw, and I kind of went. I can modify this to be Jigsaw easily, or the the doll easily. So that was kind of fun one. Yeah, that's oh really my gosh! Cool one. Like this, is, I mean, th your work is just tremendous, and uh, you even did a, um, a succession. Of kind of the growth of of a character, um, yeah. You know, the, I, the the grim character. I mean, the, I, is this yeah. something that you've established? Um, the in well, twenty thirteen would have been when I I actually got back into doing uh, the toys. Um, originally, I was I started doing like garage kit stuff back in the nineties, and it all kind of went away because of Todd McFarlane and his wonderful action figures. Yeah, And then in about 2013 or so, I kind of stumbled upon people doing designer toys and, you know, resin toys and went, well, shoot, I've still been doing this since designer, you know, since the early days. So now I can get back into the toy scene. And first figure I did was that uh, version of Grimm with the hands on the sides. And then it kind of progressed. I kind of modified, made him easier to mold, refine the character and this newer one, I haven't even released him yet, but I've kind of been playing with a couple of different versions of him. It's it's just fun, something fun to go back to and yeah. kind of go, oh, yeah. you know. Yeah. If people follow you, they can kind of collect all three or you know. That's super cool. Poor poor guy lost his bottom jaw on that last yeah. one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or he's just got a massive overbite. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just felt a really tiny jaw underneath. <laughs> so if you want to see more of Mike's work, uh, Mike FX on Instagram, is there anywhere else that we can look at your, uh, um, no, it's mostly there. And if there's anything else, usually I'll put links on there. Um, Facebook is usually double posting from Instagram. Yeah. Tumblr is double posting from Instagram. Everything's kind of double posting. Gotcha. Most, most stuff I, I announce it up on Instagram somewhere and it's easy to find. That's awesome. And here's where you can find us on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, 
and Twitch um, going around. Uh, Paul, do you have anything that you wanted to put out there? I, I actually, let's take a look at uh, what you're doing while you're saying that. Uh, okay. Um, yeah, I would head over and see Mike's page. And uh, Mike, you sell you do you sell your mugs as well? Yeah, I do. Um, the the mugs aren't really anywhere but on Instagram. But you know, usually uh, by the time I post them, or if people ask me, I'm I'm making stuff all the time. So just message me. Very cool. Well, I'll be messaging you. I think I, I, think I need a mug. Yeah, <laughs> I definitely need. I need a Daruma. Yeah, I've got a bunch of them in the works. Right. I, I'm actually thinking I may I may update the design of it uh, this year as well because I think that design's about three years old. So wonderful. I felt urge to get in there and tweak it a bit. Yeah. Nice. Well, we. So what, do you, what do you got, Matt? Oh, yeah, that's looking good. good. It, it's I don't know why it's my my thing's grainy, but it's okay. He's coming along. He's looks great. Yeah, he's looks be, super cool. <laughs> <laughs> so Mike, we'll definitely have to have you back. I mean, we, I'm sure there's so much more to talk about. I mean, just your your oh, film career, all the stuff behind them that we we. Oh, oh yeah, I mean, we're gonna take a studio tour. We definitely have to have you back for. Sure. Absolutely, we'll we'll make and that. Next time will be like we'll. Get up studio tour. I'll actually put together a nice uh, folder of, you know, I'll get photos of stuff and try and be a little more organized this time. <laughs> well, and, and we didn't even get to uh, um, Hellraiser. I mean, right. every, uh, every pinhead fan in the world um, needs to know and probably knows your name because of all the work you did on, on the, all the okay. Hellraiser. I mean, I, we, we talked a little bit about it, but I mean, my, just, my, anyway, my, I'm my, Hellraiser is kind of my unspoken secret. Um, I've I've actually been playing the character of Chatterer since like the fifth movie. So um, it's kind of like wow. I'm, I'm in just about all of them except nine. I think I'm not in nine. Oh wow. my god! I was I was so busy doing the effects on nine. I just couldn't find a way to get myself in there. Are, are you a, are you a, a at heart a big horror movie fan? I mean, do, yes. Do you, okay, I was yeah. going to say you kind of have to be at this point, right? Yeah. 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 So no, they're, they're great. I mean, it's just it's pure escapism, you know. Oh yeah, big time. So. Yeah, we we saw in your IMDb that you had actor on there uh, among your other credits. So it was like, so you actually yeah. did do acting in these movies. So oh, that's, yeah. So we'll definitely have to touch on that uh, next time. So uh, thank you so much for being here. It's been a pleasure. We love seeing your work and talking to you today. Absolutely. No, we'll have to do it again sometime. Heck definitely yeah. we'll, we'll be better prepared I'll, I'll lay out and say right let's talk about this stuff and here's photos you know perfect <laughs> perfect Love we it. look forward to it cool. so we will be back um next thursday 4 p.m pacific 7 p.m eastern uh thank you so much uh, for joining us in the comments and we will see you uh next thursday good night everyone take care good night guys